and I hope uh, you guys are still, you know, you still have your energy because the next speaker that we have uh, is going to talk about a little bit about, you know, unlocking the universal creativity, something that I'm interested in as well. Uh, we're going to talk, uh, I'll just introduce the speaker first. Uh, our speaker is Maestro Stevens. He's the founder of Iconic Expressions and has eight plus years of experience in marketing strategy, brand strategy and uh, project management. So guys, this is one person who has been using technology and uh, you know has been making his life easy, life cooking and traveling easy through technology and strategy. So put your hands together for Maestro. Maestro, please, we would love to have you on stage. Over to you, thanks. All right, thank you. All right, hopefully this uh, clicker is gonna be clicking because I've seen some people have some trouble with their clickers. So we gonna see. Well, you know how they say the math ain't mathing? If the clicker ain't clicking, something ain't happening. We're going to figure it out. Um, so I'm going to have a different approach to my presentation, to my session. It's going to be a little different than probably what you're used to. I've waited a long time to have this opportunity. This is actually a dream come true. Uh, I want to throw some shout outs first, because how can we talk about inclusivity without including the people that matter? Does that make sense? OK. So. Real quickly, um, I want to give a shout out first of all to WordPress, uh, WordCamp Asia, organizers, O'Neill, if you're in here, if you're not in here, you you've been holding it down, thank you. Some notable mentions, um, Destiny, Cocomatic, and Automatic, they are a big part of the reason why I'm here. Um, they, they helped me get here, so I have to thank her, I have to thank them for, for so much. Uh, the Cadence crew, uh, have client partners, Royalty on the Lake, Alicia, Nick, Claire Canvas, Etar and Bernard for showing me a great time last night. It was, it was nice. Uh, Vickis with InstaWP. I wouldn't be able to have the platform I have without his hosting and his solutions. Uh, the Jacksons, the Daves, the Shorters, the Founders, Matt Mullenweg and Mike Little. And I'm saying Mike Little because a lot of people don't know his name and know he is a founder of WordPress and is from the African diaspora. So we're going to give a round of applause for that. Can we give a round of applause for that? Thank you. My team, Limwell and Dessa, um, I wish they could be here. The irony is uh, my two um, employees have been working with me for about two and a half years, and they live in the Philippines. And I told them when they started working for me, one day I was going to meet them in person. Tonight or tomorrow, I'm hoping I can make that dream come true, because as we say where I'm from, they're right around the block. Now, I know that doesn't mean they're literally around the block, because they're probably a water away, but we say, hey, that person's right around the block. You know what I'm saying? That, hey, that's down the street. Then it's five blocks later. 20 blocks later, and you finally get to your destination. So I want to thank them for everything. They've been holding it down. My family, my mom's side, the Shermans, and my dad's side, the Stevens, and my daughter, Yadira. She is a big part of everything of why I'm here today, and I'm going to leave a legacy for her. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to move pretty quickly because I've heard I got some cue cards and, you know, I got to be quick and they got to wrap it up real fast. So we're going to move quick through this and then get to some QA because I think that you all might want to ask some questions. So a little bit about our story um, with Iconic Templates. I know they said Iconic Expressions, but we're here today for Iconic Templates. Um, at Iconic Templates, we're not just developing templates. We're building technology-empowered community for creative minds across the globe. IT, short for Iconic Templates. You're going to hear IT a lot, so get used to it. Stands as a beacon for affordability, uniqueness, and inclusiveness, tailored for the BIPOC community, reinforcing our commitment to a more diverse creative world. And this is just a short timeline of events that we've, that we've uh, had over the years, where I started the agency, the parent company, back in 2015. We built our first WordPress um, websites for clients in 2020. I founded Iconic Templates as an MVP in 2022. I found, uh, I was a founder, excuse me, I spoke at WordCamp um, as a founder, representing my company um, at EU and US. And in 2024, this year, we rebranded and re relaunched. Now, here's one thing that I'm real curious, a little trivia, I kind of did this off the cusp, and it came last night when I was talking to a couple, couple brothers and some sisters. And I'm, 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 I'm betting that most people can't answer this question. If you already know the answer, because I've told you, you, you don't count, you don't get it. But I will get you a drink on 
the speaker after party, excuse me, not speaker after party, but the after party. We just had the, the after party the other day, and it was, it was nice. Uh, but at the after party, and I want to know, basically, you just tell me after, the, after the, the session, there's been three people that have spoken, that have spoken at all three work camps in a row, since Work Camp Europe, Work Camp US, and Work Camp Asia. I am one of those. There's two more. If you know the other two, after this session, tell me who it is, and I owe you one round. Maybe two if you're lucky. I owe you one round. Okay? Again, the people who know the answer that I've told that we talked about this, you don't count in this situation. Again, three speakers, I am one, and I'm very proud of that. There's two more. I want to see who can guess. So I won't go too much into my story since we, we, we got um, a little bit of an introduction. But for the most part, um, you know, outside of the, the strategy, the development, the project management, all the blah, 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 blah. Outside of that, I really cherish fatherhood and I love the simplicity um, that not only technology brings, but knowledge brings. Um, it, you know, life can be a lot more simple if you're willing to, to educate yourself if you're willing to learn something. So when it comes to that, I'm a big fan of that. And the culinary arts, AKA me being a chef in another life, not in this life, another life. Uh, literature and music and travel are a big part of my biggest passions. And that is my um, baby girl right there. I was there when she was born. Um, and I'm gonna be, hopefully be there for the rest of her life. So quickly, the agenda. Part one, we talk in accessibility. Part two, a community and the culture. Part three, design it with purpose. And then as I was told, see they didn't know I put that in the, in the thing. They said, Maestro, you gotta wrap it up. And we put that sign up, you gotta wrap it up. So I said, okay, I'm gonna wrap it up. All right, talking accessibility. So let's just go over some preliminary or, or some housekeeping things when we're talking and defining accessibility for WordPress. It's people with visual impairments, blindness, low vision, people with hearing impairments, deafness and hard of hearing, people with motor disabilities, limited dexterity and coordination, limited strength or range of mo motion, people with cognitive disabilities, learning disabilities, attention deficits. Then we also have people with speech dis disabilities, alternative communication methods, visual cue needs, Older adults and temporary disabilities, age-related impairments, injuries, or short-term medical conditions. Now, I want to pause here because of the fact that um, there was a speaker that came before me today, and he presented, and he is the expert when it comes to more of the accessibility stuff. So I give Joe a shout out for that. So I'm not going to do that part. I'm going to take a little bit of a right turn, left turn. 360, whatever you want to call it. You know, we're going to go somewhere. I'm going to move the goalpost. Normally, we don't move the goalpost, but today we're going to move the goalpost. It's not a bad thing. So we know that accessibility is important because it powers 43%. Now, there's some people in here right now that are going to say, no, Maestro, it powers 44, 43.2. It powers 42.1. I don't care. We, it's power, it powers, you know what I'm saying? It powers the world, you know, like, like electricity. However, that's why accessibility is so important. So we're thinking about accessibility for diverse communities. We're talking about the cultural vibe. You know, as the kids say, you gotta you got vibe with it. You gotta vibe with me. We're talking about UI and UX, user interface and user experience. And we're also talking about how it actually responds. Not it being responsive, but how it responds. How do people respond to it? How do people respond, or how do it respond to people? So contrast and color. This is huge when it comes to making things accessible and also inclusive because the type of colors that you use are representative of the culture, the mission, um, your vision and values. Keyboard navigation. Can somebody navigate the website with just the keyboard? Screen reader friendly design. Can your website or your app be read with a screen reader. Maybe you're using um, something on the browser, like an extension, 
and it needs to be able to read the text. That way people who have disabilities can still get the content and still get the information that they need. Responsive and mobile friendly. We know this. We, we, we are using phones, cell phones. You saw me reading my notes. People are looking at content and looking at websites on phones or looking at it on tablets. So it's not just desktop, but it's everything else. Representation and inspiration. That's also really, really important when it comes to people believing and feeling like it was made for them, it's meant for them. I bet most people in this room don't know, and I just learned it from um, one of the uh, uh, language translating um, plugins, that most people won't buy unless it's in their native language. And there's data out there that shows and proves that most people want to see themselves when they are purchasing or when they are viewing or when they are engaging or when they are browsing. They want to see parts of themselves that encourages them to make a decision. Representation is huge. So this is me playing around instead of being boring. I, ca I call it getting styling on them. Y'all might call it design, custom design. You got a style on them. This is the classic customizer. And you know, when, you're getting, when you're styling on them, you're adding colors, you're adding your headings, you're adding your backgrounds. This is the full site editing version of the same thing, depending on which route you want to go. You still got a style on them to make it accessible. Part two, a community and the culture. So we went from the accessibility aspect of things to now talking about us, the people. So what is community? The WordPress community is a global collection of developers, designers, and content creators working together to evolve and support the platform. Why is community and culture important to Iconic Templates? Community is, a vital, community is vital to Iconic Templates because it fuels creativity and inclusivity, ensuring our platforms continuously resonate with diverse audiences. Engaging with communities allow us to gather unique insights and feedback, driving innovation and fostering a sense of belonging of diverse creators, among diverse creators. So tips for contributing to the WordPress community. Active participation, meetups, online discussions, shout outs to Black Press, content creation and blogging, storytelling, creating, co creating content, Contributing to open source projects, like contributing to code, offering design inputs, testing for bugs, leading or participating. You can initiate, you can join, or you can engage, or you can do all twee. That's how my daughter talks. She says, twee, daddy. Like, twee, like the tree? No, twee. Design it with purpose. Part twee. I brought it back. See how I brought it back? Oh, y'all not with me. See, I'm warming up. Y'all don't understand. When I do presentations, I start off slow. Then we just keep climbing and climbing and climbing until I get y'all cracking up. So if you're going to design it with purpose, you got to think about what is going to be some of your, the foundation of your design. What is the foundation of the tools that you're using? Now, I know, I know, it can be a little controversial uh, when it comes to what you use, because we all use different things. Block themes and core blocks. I'm starting to learn more about why they're important and how useful they are when it comes to building a lean site. Like lean. Okay, y'all ain't ready yet. Um, so. 2024 theme we have here, we have our theme, we have our design. Now here's another thing too. I got a little bone to pick. A little, I got a little bone to pick. Like the bones that I was picking out that, uh, that duck. You know, it's not, oof, it has some bones in it, but it was good though. We often use a lot of words interchangeably. It's very confusing in WordPress. It makes it very hard to bring new people in, to educate new people, because we use these different things, like blue is green, and, but green is blue, and, but yellow is 
well, okay, I don't know what yellow is anymore. And it's that thing where, yes, you see the word design, but it's still the customizer at the end of the day. And if you're using something different, you'll see that, in a di you'll see different words meaning the same thing. And I'm noticing some brands and some companies are starting to make things easier, such as the word block patterns. They're starting to incorporate WordPress's terminology and not so much use their own terminology. And that does make things easier. Uh, and we have our core blocks as well, too. So now we have classic themes and third-party blocks. And that's why this looks different, because you'll, you're going to see a different user interface, depending on what direction, what pathway you take. So you can start off with some type of classic theme. You can use something like a Cadence or Astra. And then you're going to see, once again, it says you are now customizing WordPress. You don't see the word uh, design in here, but it's the same thing. And then we have blocks. So you can use third-party blocks to add more advanced functionality to your website if the core blocks themselves is not enough for your needs. And last but not least, we have the old tried and true page builders and widgets. So page builders such as Elementor. Now, once again, terminology it says design system. It's still design, still a customizer. They're just using a different terminology. And you can see the theme style. And then instead of calling it blocks, they call their widgets. It's all the same thing. So now do you understand what I mean by terminology versus definition versus actuality? Sometimes you could be using words and using different things, but they all mean the same thing. It just depends on what you're using. And these are three of the main pathways that people usually take when they're thinking about design. So develop it with inclusive design. Representation. I just mentioned that earlier just to give you guys a little hint and plant a seed. Diverse imagery, inclusive narratives, and authenticity. I can't tell you how important that that is. It's so important. And I want to make sure I'm doing good with time, so I'm, gonna keep my eye, I'm keeping my eye on the ball. I'm keeping my eye. I'm looking. But for me, this was what inspired me to even want to think about including different cultures, including uh, people that are black and brown or people who are from countries or continents like Asia, countries like Taiwan. Um, including people in the Middle East. It's because I did not see myself on a lot of templates for a long time. I didn't see people that looked like me. Now, most people will say, well, what's the problem with that? You're just going to take the content out anyway, maestro. Why are you getting all bent out of shape? I've literally been told that multiple times. But I just told you in the beginning that representation matters. I, I see people all the time. Sometimes if the images are so good, or they just keep them there. So representation of how you use images, it makes a big difference. Same way aesthetics do. Culturally rich palettes, accessibility focused, and emotionally resonant colors. Then we have transparency, clear design, origins, open feedback channels, and ethical practices. Inspiration, what did you use to inspire you to create what you've created? Global Design Influences, BIPOC Creators Spotlight, Future Focus Trends. And a real quick story on, on this particular part here, because this was something that really did give me a lot of inspiration um, and helped my team get inspiration when it came to creating our design and creating our layout and creating um, our theme. One of my favorite artists is Jay-Z, as you can see here. Um, for a long time, when we started this mission, I didn't know who I was. My identity was not completely carved out. And so, if you use Wayback and you went to our website, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of colors. Now, I didn't know this back then, but I promise you one day this is going to be a famous story, because this this, I can't make this up. I didn't know that the choice of the colors that we chose were reflective 
of me not knowing or believing or being who I needed to be. Meaning we just, I just, we had a whole bunch of colors. Notice you don't see a whole bunch of colors now. That's because a year and a half later, through a lot of, um, I'll say prayer, and other things, <laughs> I was able to focus and say, you know what, I'm going to make a decision to just be myself, which I believe a lot of you have done as well, too. And Jay-Z's album, The Blueprint, was, and it just came to me in a dream, literally a eureka moment. A year and a half later, I thought, you know, I'm a blueprint. People who are being modeled by other people, they're blueprints. You're a template. If, you, if you've done something in your life that somebody else is modeling from you, you're a template. You're a blueprint. So when I thought about that, and I'm like, well, what is my favorite artist? Oh, the blueprint. And so I took that inspiration, and we just started playing around with it. And literally, the word blue has, um, it's a solid color, solidarity in many ways. Um, and blue also has some other meanings. But I just thought it was something that it, it, it came as an a epiphany, if you will. So use those things when it comes to giving yourself inspiration. I said it was going to be quick. So we're going to wrap it up. Look, I made, a job, I made the job easy, didn't I? You're like, you ain't you're making my job too easy for me now, huh? <laughs> but I did this because, like I said, I wanted to give you all the opportunity uh, to give me some feedback and ask questions because I saw some places that people didn't have enough time to do a Q&A session, and I felt bad for that. So I said, well, let me just get through um, the presentation in a way where you can get the slides. I believe the slides are going to be available. No, I don't have them like Joe did with the whole fancy... Um, QR code thing, you know, I'm not that accessible yet when it comes to that stuff. I'm going to get there, though. Um, but I want to thank you guys. Um, if you want to check out the site to see if, if we are really inclusive and accessible and, and you want to test our might, um, check things out, you can use the QR code here. Again, it doesn't lead to the slides. We're going to do that next time. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Reverse. I don't know nothing about that. Maybe I'm not in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do the little shaming. All right. So I guess we have, do we have time? Do, do we have time for you? Or am I out of time? I, you know, I'm, I'm a little sarcastic sometimes, but I'm just <laughs> She's like, you got some time. You got enough time. So, um, yeah. Um, how, how do we want to do it? Not everybody at once now. I know nobody wants to be the first person. So, uh, he's just making my job easier as well. I mean, I was the one who's supposed to take the questions out here, but I was just sitting out there mesmerized by his <laughs> talk. I was trying to let you chill. <laughs> Anyone who has questions, okay, we've got questions, so please go ahead. Okay. Hello. I just, I just say ladies first, but both of you are ladies. So oh. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the talk, Maestro. I wanted to ask you if you had maybe an example story of maybe a customer you've worked with where you took them from, you know, maybe not knowing their vision and understanding what they needed and applying your tools and knowledge to, you know, what uh, their needs and getting them where they needed to be. So basically how... Um, a, maybe an ex a example of a customer was taken from A to B, kind of with the process. Is that what you're asking? In a yeah, way, yeah, like getting into like what is my story? Who am I? Like how do you, and then how do I reflect that into my site? And good question. Um, well, I know that I was hinting at it in certain ways because this is ne not necessarily about design itself or branding itself, but I was striving to plant the seed that the only reason why we got to where we got to and what I do with my customers, um, in the beginning when I was shouting out a couple of my client partners and clients, they're the people that I was mentioning intentionally because I help get them from A to B. And we always start with branding. Uh, we always start with your, your um, how do I call them, kind of like your qualitative um, factors of your business or your brand. What's your mission? What's your values? What do you believe in? Um, where do you want to be? And then what is your target audience? Who are your customers? 
my, the, the client that I mentioned, Royalty on the Lake, uh, we were able to help her and her nonprofit get to a point to where her, she had a vision and she didn't understand exactly what it looked like on paper. Because you know how we be thinking things, but yet we don't know what it actually is going to be. And when you go through a process of branding, like brand strategy and brand identity, these are terms that I'm sure most people in this room are, are very aware of, but when you go through those stages, you rarely have to do a lot of, um, how can I say, kind of faking it till you're making it or figuring things out because now you have actual data to back up your theory, to back up your assumptions. You actually have um, uh, documentation. You actually have um, plans. When you combine those things and you combine your elements of your brand, it makes your, the design, it makes your website so much better in so many ways because now you're unique. You, you stand out. You don't look like everybody else. Um, as well as it makes your team more empowered and more confident. And that's something that I think that it's very important that when you're thinking about all of this stuff, if you're not going through a process of, I need to write down who am I, where am I, what am I, what do I want to be, what position, you're not, your website is not going to get to the point where you're, you're designing it or you're thinking about it for others. And so, um, like I said, my, my previous, uh, or my, my current customer, uh, not customer, but my current client, um, they are in the, well, we're past the branding stage, so now we're getting ready to go into the website stage. And we're only going to the website stage because they signed off on the branding stage, if that makes any sense. Oh, good question, Destiny. Thank you. Hi. Um, I liked your comment about um, sort of seeing more images of oneself because uh, I'm, I'm an overseas Asian living in you know, European um, countries and actually that is something that's quite remarkable because the moment you see an image, you really immediately resonate. And I wanted to ask you, you know, as designers, as content developers, how could we push more of that? And I know... Um, for instance, as you say, there's, there's so many websites that can offer free images or you know images that are contributed. But how do we engage more people to so build up that sort of uh, kind of critical mass and encourage people to sort of be more diverse and versatile in that sense? And are you referring to um, people doing it on their own websites? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it takes talks like this. <laughs> like to be honest, you know, we need talks like this. We need more talks like this. Um, the reason why I kept, you know, picking on in, 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 um, you know, in, in, a, in a friendly way, but, um, you know, Joe, when it came to his, because his talks, as he, he's been, he's traveled so much, he's done so much with accessibility that, I, you know, most people wouldn't have the same type of insight, you know, if it wasn't for people like him and Michelle, you know, that were able to help build these, um, build these opportunities and bridges. So, I think that it starts with people talking about it, you know, on a, a major level, but also to be 100% honest and transparency, because transparency was a big part of my talk. Sometimes I'm overly transparent. I, I'm learning, I got to hold that back, because I hate when people use things against me, if that makes any sense. But the reality is, is that we have to have conversations, and we have to understand our, 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 our tribe and our communities. And that's something that uh, without going into too much detail, I learned that in the past month, I was talking to the wrong group of people. And that's why I was getting a lot of, of you know, um, misunderstandings, I guess, per se. You know, it came in different forms. I'm, I mean, I'm keeping this, you know, family friendly, you know what I mean? But it came in other forms. But when I said what you just said to these people, the wrong tribe, they didn't like that. That's why I said a year and a half ago, if you weigh back my, um, my brand, um, you'll see that, the colors are all over the place. It was because when I tried it, I got discouraged, and then I said, you know what, I'm gonna make something for everybody. And then a year later, I was like, you know what, no, I'm not doing that. I'm making something for specific people. And I, and I, I will take whatever it's gonna come, whatever hurt, pain, anger, you know, people, I'm gonna take whatever it comes to, to, to do this, because the, that question you just asked is why I'm here today. And the only reason why I got to the point that we are, as when Destiny asked about the branding, I had to understand who I was.
before I can even show pictures of what I look like, what I should look like, and what you should look like. Did that, did that make sense? Did that answer your question? Hey, Maestro, thanks for the great presentation. Um, you uh, talked about going from version one to version two, but during your presentation, you showed full site editing, you show page builder. Are your templates available in all three of those formats? Or can you talk a little bit about how do people access your templates and, and, and use them in those different environments? Good question. They are currently only available in the classic format, if you're talking about the, the, the three that I mentioned. Um, right now, we are looking to tr uh, transition. So one thing that we did, and let me know if time is OK. Uh, one thing that we did is I, I, I named the, well, I, so I'm, 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 I'm going to drop some gems on y'all. Trademarking is real. <laughs> like, if you're going to come up with a trademark, OK? If y'all don't know, I mean, especially, um, I don't know if trademarking is in every country, but it's very important to trademark your ideas. I promise you, because you will be going, you'll have to change things up later on. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because um, I wanted to create a terminology called universal, universal theme. I found that I couldn't use universal theme because Universal Studios stole every version of the word universal. So the lawyers told me, hey, you, you kind of picking the battle, you might lose, even though I'm a mighty man. But I can't beat the world, you know? Uh, Scott Pilgrim traversed the world, but not me. That's another joke. I don't know if y'all know the movie. Uh, but so when it, came, when it comes to our themes, I wanted to create a unique way of saying, hey, we have one style to fit all these different types of pathways, meaning we're going to use one um, plumber theme, you know, or one restaurant theme, whatever. And it's going to be in classic. It's going to be in um, the page builder with Elementor. And it's going to be with the, um, the, word the block editor. So a person can say, you know what, I, I like that, the look. But, ooh, I don't use that tool, though. Man, now I can't use that look. That was a problem that I started noticing in the community. If you, I like that look, but I don't use that tool. And I didn't see anybody that's making the same look with multiple tools. So I was like, let's call it universal template themes. So I'm, I'm that, I ended up having to switch the name out, you know, switch the name because of that. That's why I said the universal story to, to give a little context to why I changed the name. So the whole um, theme of the theme, a little wordplay for y'all, the whole theme of the theme was universal template theme um, and universal um, template libraries is because we're also creating, uh, we'll say forms, we're creating, um, block patterns, we're creating automations, emails, and we're doing it with multiple plugins. It's the same email, the same styles, but it's with this plugin and this plugin and this plugin. That's a lot of work, but I believe it's worth it because if somebody says, I like what that looks like, I want to use it, but I don't have that tool, well, what do you do? You can't use it. So unless we provide opportunities, that's my other kind of way of being accessible, making things accessible, if that makes sense. Um, and you help define accessibility in different ways, and I just wanted to help um, extend that. Can you take a follow-up? Um, have you seen any trends in terms of what people want? I mean, are they preferring your full site editing versus your page builder? Um, from version one to two, do you see any trends uh, forming? Only because we only have the, at least the, the, the themes we, the themes uh, templates, we only have those in classic. I haven't seen anything from the version, not, not with that yet. I'm excited to see what that's going to look like in this next year, um, but not yet. I haven't seen any people, anybody say that only because we haven't provided them in different ways. Um, but to answer your, your, your previous questions about how to access them, that was the main reason why I said, hey, if you want to use the key, again, I'm not as fancy as you with the QR code with the slides, but hey, the QR code, go to the site, and that's how you should access them. If it's not easy for you to access, we have a problem. <laughs> like, that, like, you're the test for me. If you went to the site and you can't figure out how to access our templates, now I got to figure something else out. <laughs> we have a problem. So I want to use that to learn. Does that um, answer the first one and the second one? Okay. Any other questions, please? 
Okay, I'll just ask the last question from me. Uh, since being uh, so, you've been working on strategies all along. You've been working on marketing. You've been working on branding. Uh, is there a golden rule for every industry that you might follow while talking to your clients? That you know, you've been, you've been getting clients from different industries, of course. Has there been a golden rule that okay, fine, this is how I would approach? You just uh, you know get into the brain of the person, understand what they have to ask. But is there some 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 sort of uh, again? I'll use the word template where you can actually access the pe person's mind and then just understand what it is? Or is it different from, for every industry, the strategy bit? Is it different for every industry? Um, I would say that we should all have some sort of process, all of us, including myself, including you. Now, that process needs to be flexible because sometimes you gotta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get down. I dare somebody to challenge me on the dance floor for the after party. I dare you. Anybody in here? But, that's why I, 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 but I, I know somebody in here got some, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but um, to your point, yeah, I definitely would say that process is a template. It should be a template. And you should be able to apply it. I've applied it to my clients, um, and we've applied it to our our templates and our themes for our customers so they can have also access of my brain without, you know, using up my time. You know what I'm saying? Time, 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 you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right. So that's why I was like, hey, um, you, we all need the opportunity to have a process or a starting point, and that's what a template is. So I use that with all of my clients, uh, but then I adjust to their personality. I adjust to their preferences. I always tell my clients, we have to have a balance of your preferences, like what you like, versus it is what it is. That's another term we use, hey, it is what it is. It ain't, it, you know what I'm saying? This is, I can't go through it. It is what it is, you know, it's just, just, it is what it is. So you have to combine the it is what it is with their preferences. And that's a hard thing to do because a person likes what they like. And they will um, hire you or bring you on board, no matter what it is that you're doing, whether it's designing, developing, whether it's consulting, whatever it is that you do, they'll bring you on board, and then they'll fight you. They'll fight your information. And I always tell people, I don't want to have to fight you to fight for you. Does that make sense? Dropping some gems on y'all now. No, that's my quotable right there. Tag me to that one. But yeah, guys, <laughs> you should actually use that. You, know, you, you don't fight them to fight for them. That's right. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying that the process and the template we want to use, but they'll start fighting you uh, with your process and template. But then they also want you to help them get from point A to point B. And it's like, well, yo, if I'm going to get in this vehicle with you, I like these metaphors, I'm in the vehicle, you're in the vehicle, I'm, I'm driving, right? You're here. If you're in the safari or you're in other places, they have wheels on both sides sometimes. Sometimes they even have on both sides. So I'm guiding you, but sometimes I'm going to let the wheel go, and you got to grab the wheel. you got to steer me. you got to give me some directions, because I can't bring your vision out for you. Now, that's the part when they get nervous. Oh, i got to drive? Yes, I cannot bring your vision out for you. you got to steer sometime. So that's the, the, the tug and pull, if that makes any sense. Thank you so much. Any other questions, guys? Uh, okay, one last question for the evening. Hi, Maestro. Um, I'm a freelancer, and I build websites for my clients. Um, but I'm not a professional designer. I self-taught design from uh, watching YouTube YouTube videos. So the the one thing I, I the, the one problem I have is like my design looks too generic. I I make sure all my websites. Uh, follows the principle of design, like uh, hierarchy, white spaces, and like contrast, etc. But this makes my website looks too generic. So uh, my question is, what's the mindset to have to break the rule while remaining aesthetically, aesthetically appealing? What's the mindset to break the rule while remaining aesthetically? Okay. That's a good question. Um, you know, that word generic, I, and I'll make this quick, but that word generic, it's an interesting term because 
I'll go back to, I like to, to connect people's questions together. So I'll go back to, to Destiny asking for the example with the client. And Alicia, don't kill me. You know what I'm saying? You, you gave me permission now. To, you know, shout, you, shout, shout, shout you out. But she called our designs generic when we first were creating her, um, we'll say, creating her um, inspiration. So there's a term that I got from Chris Doe. He is um, with the future, and he is one of my favorite, I call him my distant mentor. Um, he has a term called stylescape. I'm giving you some example right here, right? So what we did when, I, when we did our stylescape, and I had to learn through our process, when we did our stylescape, I intentionally started the stylescape generic. Now why would I do that? She called it cookie cutter. Remember, the words are interchangeable, right? Oh, this is cookie cutter, this is generic. I had to explain to her that's done on purpose because I've made the mistake of getting too detailed going into a design with stuff and then the client or the person is like, no, I don't like that when it comes to their brand. So starting generic, like my bunny ears, you know, generic quotations, um, it's, it's necessary because if you go too detailed too fast with anything, you won't give it room to grow. And think about other things, you know, as they come along. As well as, do you watch commercials? Yeah. Okay, that wasn't a trick question, that was a real question. I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Um, but commercials, if you, if you notice, no matter what country you're in, where you're from, they use a lot of, as we call it, corny concepts, right? Corny, people are like, man, that's corny, man. Like, that, that's not cool, that's, that's, a little, that's a little weak, that's a little whack. I'm trying to think about a whole bunch of different terms to say corny, right? But they say things like that. But yet, those commercials make so much, they get our attention, they make so much money, they do so much. So I'm trying to give you a con context, an example of, I get what you're saying where you want to have more of an understanding on how do I make my designs more uh, unique and appealing, fresh, hot, you know, all those terms, right? I'm trying to use, I'm 37, I know I look young, I know I look young, but I'm a little older now. But um, those things, you got to combine the two because if you play too much outside the rules, like you say, it sounds like you like, I want to be do the fundamentals, practice the fundamentals, then play, play, practice the fundamentals, but then play with everything else. Make it your playground. I think in WordPress, because I know we got developers and designers here, I'm trying to bridge the gap between us all, but in WordPress, there's a term called sandbox, right? The, you, you, sandbox site. You bring up another site. I like to call it playground. Because when I was a kid, you know, we were at the playground and da -da -da, doing the little things and swinging. So I like to where they have at the playground your generic or your certain things. But then, the, like, we look at it as, well, why, what, what's so fun about that? But a kid's so imaginative, they're, they're able to, like, turn a, a little box into their, you know, a spaceship. But the box is generic, isn't it? So... If you're following me and understand what I'm saying, I'm trying, striving to give you context to where generic and cookie cutter is not bad if you're following the fundamentals, but you're also adding your little taste. What, what they would say, put some hot sauce in that bag. You know what I'm saying? You gotta put some, you know, you, 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 you use hot sauce? No hot sauce? What, what sauce do you use? He's like, I don't use no hot sauce now. I don't use sauce. No sauce? No. Man. I wish I had some sauce for our lunch today. I was like, I need some sauce and salt and pepper. You feel me? Uh, Woo. Eric with that oh, okay. See, well, oh, see, now you're giving me more information. Now I'm starting to see more, understand more. Well, I would definitely say to, to wrap it up, utilize that generic or that fundamental approach. Keep that fundamental approach intact and then play around with other things. Get messy with it. See, I think you're... In, in, let me know if I'm wrong, but are you afraid to get a little messy with things? Kind of. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm an, uh, what do they call it? I have OCD. I have a, a small sliver of OCD myself. You know, I do. I can't help it. But I'm, a, I'm okay with getting messy. I'm okay with, you know, doing this stuff because I know that it's not just entertaining. It's helping people understand the information, want to intake the information. But I believe that once you start doing things in your regular life, your regular life, getting, it'll translate to your professional life. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much. And a huge round of applause for my Maestro. And we got a token of appreciation for you uh, for being so amazing. And anyone who wants to challenge him on the dance floor, he's here at the after party. Plus, trust me. <laughs>
All right, brother, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. And do you mind if I get a picture? Like the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never get one of these. And I said, one day I'm going to do this because I see all the famous celebrities and people do it. Like, like ah, I'm like, I'm going to do it one day. I don't care. Just, just raise your hand just, and just show the enthusiasm. Look, wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. I'm just joking. All right. I'll, I'll count to three and we'll make it, we'll make it quick. And it's 545, which means I, I'm on time. Interesting. All right. All right. Uh, let me do a backward here. Let me get the wide. Let me get the, um, I wish I had the wide. Let's see. Let's see. Can I get? Can I get, can I get, can I get, can I get, no, I can't get, all right, I can get most, I can get most, I can get most, all right, and count three, we're going to do WordPress, and you got to say it like that, if y'all don't say it like that, we're doing it again, that's what my mama said, listen, if you do it right the first time, you don't got to do it again, all right, one, two, three, great job, great job, thank y'all, I appreciate y'all.